Praise the Lord. Good evening and God bless you. This is Dr. Michael Smith. I'm I'm excited to be part of the kingdom of God. Thrilled tonight to be blessed above measure. For truly my eyes have not seen, my ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart what God hath prepared for them that love him. And I'm excited. I'm truly blessed. Good to be with you. My God, we ought to be on fire. We ought to be jumping for joy. God bless you, Nina's five boys. God bless you, Sister Janice Hasty from Louisiana. My God, we ought to be blessed and jumping for joy after just getting off of Pastor Scott's uh, scope. My Lord, powerful, powerful, powerful man of God. Love him dearly, precious man of God. I got something on my spirit I need to share with you on this night. Uh, just take you into some word of God, show you some things. Uh, I, I come on a little earlier and I had to pee. I had, I had everybody go and I, I, I asked him, I said, how many times have you seen a voice walk? <laughs> and, and it's just amazing. I said, took him over in Genesis three and eight where he said, Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. Uh, God's pretty awesome. My God, when his voice talks, that's, that's pretty powerful. Amen. That's pretty powerful. A lot of people read the word and, and don't take time. God bless you, Pastor 510. Thank you for joining. You was with us earlier. My Lord, praise the Lord, still in the house. My God. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. Yes, he is. My, my God is wonderful. Amen. If, if you're sitting around your house, maybe your, your dining room table, living room table, uh, uh, coffee table there in front of you, or just on the couch enjoying a uh, quiet evening and you got a Bible within reach, uh, man, it'd be awesome if you grab your Bible and, and, uh, I just want to go into some things. I want to show you some things that I think are, are really important, relevant to, to today. I, I believe that, uh, there needs to be an on time word. There needs to be a relevant word. God bless you. Judy's mom is yeah, 67 joint. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. But I think the word needs to be relevant. Yeah, not, uh, not, not, uh, we don't need no more Tupperware messages. We need some real word. Amen. We need some good, solid, uh, gospel coming out of the, the hearts and the, the word, the voice of ministers in the pulpit. And I, I'm, I'm, the more I look at this, the more I see how relevant it really is. Yes, the ring of word, the powerful word. My God, that's so true. As I, I look at this this chapter, I, uh, every time I look at it, I realize how more powerful it gets and how uh, more precise and more right on time it is. Because this is a picture, this is symbolic of exactly what's happening in the world today. And and, and it's it's amazing that, you know, we can look at the conditions of our, our, our nation today and, and we can literally go into the Word of God and see it in the Word of God uh, just, just by studying it, just by acknowledging it and 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 it's vitally important my god it is sharper than a double double-edged sword yes it is but if you got a bible i i, I just want to kind of run through some things and uh if you give me a little bit of your time i i greatly appreciate it if you got to get off i understand i truly do uh but i i just want to kind of wet your taste buds a little bit give you some nuggets of the gospel and show you some things in, in, in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, I want to start with the 16th verse. <coughs> and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Susay. Now tell me that's not where America is right now. I mean, in reality, tell me if that's not where America is right now. That's exactly where we're standing. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. We're there, right there. We're there. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. I'm here to tell you, I don't believe in these preachers that got to fight and wrestle and scream and holler and, and do all these uh, dramatic things when casting out the devil. I believe we can speak to the powers of darkness and tell them to come out, and they got to come out. Simple as that. I don't believe in fighting with them, and I don't believe in bickering with them and arguing with them 
with them. Jesus said, come out, and they came out. And if, if Jesus said it, he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that's why I'm telling you, my friend, that we need to understand who we are, but we need to understand what we are. And look what he said. He goes on in 19... And when her master saw that their hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers. Huh? Tell me that's not where America's church is right now. Huh? When we begin to get up huh, and we begin to stand up and speak, hallelujah, the oracle, the, the power of God, huh, we're making the enemy mad. Huh? Look what he said in the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Huh? I want you to write on your type on your screen right now I'm here to trouble the city I, he said these men's being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs uh, which are not lawful for us to receive neither observe being Romans uh, and the multitude rose up together against them uh, tell me I'm telling you listen to me is this not the what's going on in America right now uh, is this not where we're at in in the in the world uh, as a as a whole right now. Hallelujah. They are rising up against God's people. They are rising up against those that are standing for the principles of the doctrine of salvation. They are rising up for those that speak. Hallelujah. The goodness of God. They are rising up. There's a religious spirit that is rising up against the move of God. Hallelujah. God is not looking for an invitation, my friend. God is looking for a habit God don't want to be invited. He wants to come in and live. And the Bible goes on, and the Bible said, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. I'm just so amazed at this. He said, Who, comma, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. Now history tells me that this was a dungeon. History tells me that this was some place that was very wet, very humid, very cold, very uh, uh, very poor. There may have been uh, uh, insects and, and rats climbing and going all over the place and, and it was just a very, it was not a very safe place. It was not like a modern jail but it was a place where the 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 worst of the worst were placed. And look what he said. I love this in verse 25. And he said, and at midnight. Now think about that. I want to say it again. And at midnight. There's something there that's telling us a prophetic voice of what we need to do. There's something there. Hallelujah. That, that we need to understand. Think about what I'm saying to you. Uh, the midnight hour, uh, translated in the Greek language, uh, simply means in the midst of something. Uh, you know what? Anybody can praise God whenever things going good. Uh, anybody can praise God when you're not sick uh, and you got money in your wallet uh, and the bank account's going great uh, and the car's running good and everything's flowing just right. Uh, but you know what? When all of a sudden uh, you get a little bit of test, uh, it's a whole other ball game. Uh, and God said, and at midnight, he simply wants you and I to know, and at midnight, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of ISIS, in the midst of San Bernardino, in the midst of Paris, France, in the midst of 9-11, in the midst of everything that's going on around about you, in the midnight hour, in the midst of the most coldest dungeon possible. I remember in the Philippines, I wrote the book called From the Prison of Purpose to the Prison of Praise. God places you in a place. Hallelujah. You know where you manifest how much you love God? Is being able to praise Him in the test. You know how, you know how you can show God how committed you are to Him? Is by loving Him in the middle of the storm. Come on, hear what I'm saying to you. My God, in your affliction, in your troubles, in your heartaches, that's where you get to know God. That's where you become intimate with God. That's where you build and solidify 
solidify your relationship with him is doing it in the storm. Paul and Silas done it in the midst of the prison. They didn't wait until uh, thinking, oh God, you know, if you'll get us out of here, uh, we'll praise you. If you'll release us, uh, we'll praise you. We'll... No, 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 no. Uh, you know, they begin to praise God. Uh, the Bible said, and at midnight, right in the midst of all the trouble, right in the midst of all the chaos. My God, you you uh, you you go to some churches right now, and 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 their praise has been hampered by everything going on around about. That they're standing in the pulpit and they're talking about all the chaos and all the turmoil, and we're giving the devil more glory than we're giving God. Oh, come on, hear what I'm saying? Praising in their bondage and chain. That's right. That's when they begin to do it. He said in verse 25, and at midnight, in the midst, Paul and Silas, number one they prayed. My God, that's the greatest level of warfare you can enter. The Bible said, and remember one of the scopes, he said, submit yourself therefore to God and resist. The word resist means oppose with a praise. Hallelujah. My God. Oppose with a praise. He said, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, comma, the writer's telling me, stop and listen to what Paul and Silas done. Oh, my God. In the midst of the inner dungeon, they begin to praise God. He said they prayed and sang praises. Hallelujah. So they're doing both unto God. Now, there's the key. How many times do you praise your problems? How many times do you praise your issues? How many times do you praise the fact Hallelujah, that you're feeling good. Remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. We praise everything that goes wrong, but we don't mention God. He said, and at midnight, hallelujah, they prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now, I want you to understand this. The word prisoners here in the Greek language translates, and it means ligaments. The prisoners, the ligaments of the body. Hallelujah. This is symbolic of 2015, my friend. This is exactly what 2015. Hallelujah. God is putting some people in a prison situation. Hallelujah. So we can rattle the walls of the prison. Hallelujah. And our praises will go forth and the ligaments of the body of Christ will hear us. He said, and the prisoners heard them Look what he said. And suddenly, it didn't take long. It wasn't hours. It wasn't days. It wasn't weeks. It wasn't months. And suddenly, oh, come on. Somebody invite your friends. I'm not getting no hearts tonight. Uh, hallelujah. Either you're paying very close attention uh, or there's nothing going on. Uh, hallelujah. And suddenly, come on now. Uh, and suddenly, uh, hallelujah. You know what? I, I love the fact that it don't take God hours or weeks. Uh, God's waiting on us. Come on now. God is simply waiting on us. Hallelujah. You, you don't ever believe yourself. Uh, don't ever think in yourself that you're waiting on God. You're not waiting on God. Uh, hallelujah. You may be wrapped up in God, but the way we think wait is we're not waiting on God. God is waiting upon us to move. Uh, look what he said. The Bible said, draw nigh to me. And I will draw nigh to you. So you got to make the first step. You need God to move in your situation. You need to get up from where you're at and go to where you want to be. Maybe I need to say that again. I said, you're needing God to move in a situation in your life. You need to get up from where you're at and go to where you want to be. Come on now. Hallelujah. You need to quit talking about what you want and begin to, uh, uh, and to begin to take charge of what the Bible said, heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it. They seize it by force. They don't wait for it to come to them. They go to it. Come on. Hear what I'm saying to you. Come on. Hear what I'm saying to you. He said, and suddenly, without hesitation. And suddenly, the Bible said there was a great earthquake. The word earthquake means commotion. Oh, come on now. There was a great earthquake. Suddenly, it is all it took was somebody to begin to pray. 
is all it took was somebody to begin to sing. I love to go into a church where they're singing them good old gospel hymns. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. Hallelujah, there is power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. My God, nothing like him. Hallelujah. But listen, he said, suddenly there was a greater man. The minute you and I begin to pray, commotion goes in hell. The minute you and I begin to worship, commotion happens in the corridors of hell. The minute you and I begin to get lost in the glory of God, the minute you and I begin to get dedicated uh, to the power of God. My God, immediately, uh, immediately, suddenly, uh, hallelujah, the corridors of hell uh, are shaking and trembling uh, and the demons and the devils uh, are saying, my God, they're praying. <laughs> Think about it. My God, those, those radical Christians are praying again. Those radical Christians are at it again on Periscope. Think about what I'm saying to you. Those radical Christians are, 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 are at it all over again and, and they're praising God and, and, and going, losing control. He said, and look what he said. So that the foundations, listen to this. Listen to this. So that the foundation, the religious spirits that have bound, we, you know what? Too many people in God's house have been imprisoned by uh, somebody else's opinion. Come on now. You didn't hear me. Let me say it again. Too many of us have been imprisoned by someone else's opinion. Think about it. Elijah, he, he said, how long will you be pulled or torn between two opinions? How long? An opinion, come on now, an opinion has imprisoned people. A religious theory has imprisoned. You know, there's people that are not doing things, not because they love God, not because they care about God, but they've been imprisoned by a, a man-made doctrinal theory that has bound their mind and they can't be free from it because it's grasped them so tight. Hear what I'm saying to you. But God said, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. Now hear what I'm saying to you tonight. The minute you and I begin to pray and sing the praise unto God, I'm telling you, the ligaments of the body of Christ will be freed. Think about it. There's a great commotion and disturbance in the corridors of hell. I've said it once. I've said it a hundred times. You and I are the key. Come on, think about what I'm saying to you. He said here, he said, uh, so that the foundations, not, not just the foundation, but the found, everything that has bound you, everything that has oppressed you, everything that has brought you down has, it has, is shaken and rattled because of the presence of God. The religious theories. The, the, the ideas, the, the man-made, uh, 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 perspectives or doctrines that has, has, has been brought up. Everything is shaken. Everything is being destroyed here in 2015. You know what? Thank God for Periscope. Because we're getting some men and hello the old periscope that are speaking life back to the body of Christ. Uh, come on now. The, we're getting some men on periscope uh, that are preaching life uh, back into the body of Christ. And the foundations of prisons uh, are being shaken. You do not have to be bound. Think about what I'm saying to you. God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Anything that puts you in a place. Come on now. Anything that puts you in a place where you feel like you're bound to it. 
Come on now. Anytime you think that you are serving God because you're obligated, that's wrong. You want to serve God because you love Him, because you're passionate about Him, not because you have to. Come on now. Come on. I grew up in an era where uh, they preached message that, that scared you so bad, you wanted to serve God because you were scared. Come on now. You went to church because you were scared. That's the wrong reason to do it. Come on now. There's, 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 there's thousands of people out there that do things in the church because they're scared. They've been manipulated by somebody in a pulpit because some man had a theory or an idea. God's word will not manipulate you and it will not imprison you. It's here to set you free. The Bible said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, who is the Lord? John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Lord, uh, the Lord, oh, come on now, huh? hallelujah, will walk with you. You are not bound by a theory of what some man thought. Come on now. People are in prison tonight, bound and oppressed. And they're going to church out of fear. Come on, hear what I'm saying to you. Come on, hear what I'm saying to you. I don't serve God because I'm afraid of God. I don't preach because I'm afraid of God. I don't do what I do because I'm afraid of God. I do what I do because I have a passion. I love Him no matter what. Folks, I've been, I, I, I have, I have been through some things. Hallelujah. That you know what? I don't love God because what He can do for me. I love Him because He's God all by Himself. I love Him because He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords and nothing else matters. If God don't bless me another day, I'm going to love Him. But too many people today are bound and oppressed by the Spirit. I've got a book out titled, The Enemy in Me, or it's being due, due to be released soon. The Enemy in Me. It, it talks about how the, from the pulpit we're using a, a, a spirit of witchcraft in the spirit of manipulation. And pastors and ministers are manipulating the mind of people because they want people to do what they want them to do. It's not about God no more. But God said, uh, hallelujah, when you begin to pray, and you begin to sing praises and I begin to pray that the foundations of those prisons are going to be shaken. That neighbor is going to feel the shaking in her home. That that, that person in, in your workforce is going to begin to think, my God, is there an earthquake? And it's God setting people free from the bondages of sin and religion. My God, Pastor Sean Bay, good to have you. Bless you, brother. Hallelujah. He said, he looked what he said, and he said, the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately, you notice God done everything suddenly and immediately. He came to set the captive free. Yes, he did. Let me show you something. He said, and immediately, when the ligaments begin to hear, my God, Remember the word prisoners in the Greek is translated and it means ligaments. Come on, look it up. It means ligaments. There's a, there's a, there's an interpretation there that says ligaments. And when, when Paul and Silas begin to pray and they begin to sing praises and, and they begin to, to get lost, I love the fact that, you know, he put the, the, the guard shackled their feet and he shackled their arms. Number one, he should have never put their arms up. Hallelujah. Because when you put your arms up, you, that's a, that's a signification. Hallelujah. This man, he has won the battle. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. What do they do in a boxing match uh, to the winner? They lift his arm up. Come on now. Uh, hallelujah. The devil shackled those hands uh, and lifted them up and spread them out. Uh, hallelujah. And he said, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm already declaring Paul and Silas the victor. Uh, I'm already declaring them. Uh, hallelujah. He surrendered to it. Uh, hallelujah. And they begin to pray. Uh, Paul looked at Silas and said, hey, Silas, uh, why don't we just begin to sing a song? Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, hallelujah. And, and Silas said, my God, Paul said, let's just, let's just sing a song. Uh, hallelujah. When the roll is called up yonder, uh, my God, my God, uh, I'll be there. Uh, and they begin to sing that glory song. Uh, victory, victory shall be mine. Uh, hallelujah. And as they begin to sing, uh, my God, uh, everything begin to shake. Uh, and Paul said, hey, guess who showed up? <laughs> I'll fly away. There you go. Yeah, I'll fly away. Praise the Lord. I'll fly away. Hallelujah. Hey, Paul, they're, be, they're singing. I can, I, man, I can just, in my mind, I, I can just see it. As they begin to uh, praise God, and they begin to sing glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those foundations begin to shake. Hallelujah. Those spikes that were in that wall that held those chains, that had shackled to the feet and the arms, those walls begin to shake, and those spikes begin to fall out. Hallelujah. And Paul, Paul and Silas started looking and said, wow, hallelujah, look at, hallelujah, what do you say we pray some more? Let's have a revival. Let's have an anointing. If the same spirit, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells within you, it shall also quicken your mortal revival, our prison revival. I, that's why I titled it jailbreak. My God, we're having a jailbreak, folks. We're having a jailbreak. Hallelujah. Look what he said. He said, immediately, all the doors, all the, you know, God didn't just say, well, I'm going to release Paul and Silas because they were the only one praying because the whole body was in prison. I remember years back, my little grandmother died and I went to my family and I said, can I preach grandma's funeral? And everybody was worried that whether I'd be able to, my grandma was a very special lady in all of our lives. And they consented, reluctantly I must add, but they consented. And I began to pray. I said, God, I, I, I don't want just, I don't want a funeral mess. I want a celebration. I want a celebration. My grand, my granny would have wanted a celebration. This, this is on a sad occasion. She went home. She went where she wanted to go. And, uh, God spoke to me. He said, I want you to preach about Paul and Silas in prison. And that was the most unique funeral message I believe I've ever preached. The funeral director came to me, said, I've never heard a funeral message preached like that. I said, you know what? When my grandma passed away, God opened the prison doors of this life. And he allowed her to walk free. I said, she didn't have no more pain, no more affliction, no more struggles, no more battles, nothing. She was free, free from everything, free from all adversities, all everything in life. And, and, and God just delivered her at, at an instant. My God, hallelujah. And the moment she took her last breath, God spoke to me, he said, the moment that breath left her body, he said, I opened that door and he said, I allowed her to walk out no more. How there was no probation sentence. There wasn't no halfway house. She was free. She was 100% undeniably free. Hallelujah. And you know what? But we don't have to die to walk that. Oh, hear what I'm saying to you. We don't have to die to walk that. God is opening the prison doors of everything that has bound us, oppressed us, tormented us, 
beat us down. God is opening. When God gave me the book on breaking generational curses, hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hallelujah. God said, I'm, I'm releasing people. I'm releasing people from diabetes. I'm releasing people from heart disease. I'm releasing people. My God, I'm releasing people from high blood pressure, low blood pressure. I'm releasing people from poor circulation. I'm releasing people from all these illnesses. I'm setting them free. I'm releasing families, homes, hallelujah, marriages from financial poverty. I'm releasing them. I'm releasing them. I'm serving addiction in Jesus' name upon the lives of every man, woman, boy, and girl in America. I charge you in the name of Jesus, be released. Your doors are open. Walk out. Be free. Walk out. Be free. Walk out. Be free. Walk out, my friend. You are free in Jesus' name. Oh, my God. He said, he said, look at this. Immediately the doors were opened. The hearts, my God. And everyone's, everyone's, that neighbor next to you that's struggling, their bands, that lady in your office, her bands, everyone, that pastor in your church, his bands, the things that have tied him up and restricted him from flowing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, those are broken. Come on now. My God. You know what the biggest problem in America today is? Can I tell you, you know what the biggest issue in America today is? Well, I wrote the book, The Enemy in Me. You know what the biggest problem in America's church today among men? It's pornography. It's a sin that has infiltrated the minds of men and women across this land. But I challenge you. I charge you in the name of Jesus. I, I speak to the pornography devil. I, and I say, loose and let go free. My God, loose and let go free. He said, he the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. My God. My God. Two people. Two people. It took two people at the deepest point of the prison. Two people praising him. It's all it took. Two people having revival. Two people looked at one another and said, Paul, let's do a jailbreak. My God, two could put 10,000 to flight. Yeah. Can you, can you look at there, there, the, the, all the numbers that are showing on here and that have watched this scope tonight? Think what we could do. Think, just, just, just think of what we could do. It took Elijah and he put, what, all the prophets of Baal? 450? Think about it. One man. One man. It took two people. Think about it. He said, look what he said. All the bands were, and the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Don't hurt yourself. Do thyself no harm. We're all here. We don't have to run from anything. We're free. We don't have to run from nothing. We're free. I'm not running. I'm free. I, the only reason I got to run is if I'm afraid. The only reason I run is if I'm fearful. I don't have to run. I'm free. See, I, I, I have no reason to panic. We, we got, we got people panicking about what's going on in America. I, I got no reason to. Does it grieve me? Oh, yes. Yeah. 
but it makes me angrier by the moment at the devil. It makes me that much more determined that being in the prison, I'm going to praise him. False evidence appearing real. Yeah, fear. False evidence appearing real. Pastor Scott preached this morning, confession brings possession. Confess, God, I'm, I'm going to stand. God, I'm going to be victorious. God, I'm going to be more than a conqueror. You said I could be. You said that was my destiny and I'm going to walk in my day. And there's nothing nobody can do. I'm not going to allow myself and my, my destiny to be dictated by somebody else's opinion. I'm not going to be imprisoned by someone else's opinion. I'm not going to be imprisoned by someone's theory. If it don't line up with the Word of God, I'm not going to allow myself to be imprisoned by a theory. Think about it. I know you're out there. I, I know you're out there. Look what he said. Then he called for a light. They're down in the middle of a dungeon, folks. They're down in the middle of a dungeon. Dark, humid, cold, wet, smelly. Some of you are there right now. So that's, that's the prison you're in right now. That's the prison you're in right now. He said, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. We're talking about a jailbreak, saints. We're talking about a, 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 a prison revival. And the man brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Think about it. Our fruit can stink before God's nostrils. Yeah. I love it. And at midnight... In the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the problems, in the midst of all the turmoil, my confession became my possession. I begin to confess life. I begin to confess power. I begin to confess victory. I begin to confess joy. And it became a possessive thing. Amen. And at midnight, the midnight, the word midnight in the Greek means in the midst in the midst. I think the next revival I get, the next revival I go on, I'm going to call it the jailbreak. I'm not even going to call it revival. I'm going to call it jailbreak. In the midst of all the chaos. My God, grumble not, rejoice a lot. Yeah. In the midst of all the mess they prayed and sang praises. My God. And then suddenly, just imagine, just, just imagine as you begin to pray and as you begin to sing a praise to God, that quick, that quick, suddenly your situation changes. Suddenly. Your surrounding changes. Suddenly, your finances change. Suddenly, God moves on the scene. Suddenly. That quick. That fast. Look what he said. That quick. That fast. Let me show you something. If I can find it. Look what he said. Ah, uh, my God. Where's it at, Lord? Show me. I know. Uh, suddenly. Suddenly. My God. Suddenly. Suddenly. It'll happen. 
My God, I'm, 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 I'm so excited about the fact God, God is moving. God is moving by His power. God is moving. God is moving by His power. Let me see. Uh, my God. Look it up. He said in verse chapter 6 of the book of Hosea, verse 1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten his commas after all that, and he will bind us up. After two days, will he revive us? <coughs> in the third day, in the third day, he will, <coughs> <coughs> he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. After two days. My friend, we are on the third day. We're there. We're right there. I can feel the rumbling in the prison. I can feel the shaking, man. Every time I talk to somebody, I feel the rumbling in the prison cells. I feel the shaking in theories and ideas and doctrines of men. I feel them breaking down. I feel them being destroyed. I feel them crumbling. My God, I, I can I can sense in the spirit a crave for a depth and a revelation of God's word. I can sense and cra a craving for a newness of the of of the power of God for a manifestation. I sense it. Yeah, hell is shaking when we pray. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. I sense a change. In the atmosphere. I sense a change. In the atmosphere. I see a shifting. God doing something. It's, 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 it's happening. It's happening. A repositioning. My God. My God. At midnight. Right in the midst of it folks. Let's start praying. Let's start praying. He's getting us ready. What have I been telling you all along? The glory of the latter house is greater than the former. The glory of the latter house. The glory of the latter house is greater. Than the former. My God. Lord help me. After two days. After two days. God is good. Please. Email me. I'm telling you right now. If you will email me. A praise report. Of what God is doing in your life. And you will email it to me. At Liberty Ministry Warriors. At Yahoo. Liberty, if you'll put that on the screen for me, somebody, Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo. If you'll email me that, that praise report, then I will send you a gift coupon with Amazon for a download of the ebook format of the book since this is election coming up. I will send you a ebook format of one nation under God, absolutely free, no cost, no strings attached. You just send me a praise report because the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You just send me a praise report. Hallelujah. You send me a praise report. And in that email, I will send you a link to every one of my links. My, uh, my, uh, my, my YouTube link. You can go on. I've got a message on YouTube titled 400 Silent Years. Powerful word of God. It was preached in Fairbanks, Alaska at a conference. Powerful word of God. 
There's messages on there you can listen to. Uh, there's my, uh, my Facebook. All, every account, my, my website, my, my blog, everything is, is, is on there and I will send it to you. The links to everything. Plus a coupon that within the next 48 hours, Amazon will send you a, a, a an email of how to get the download of one nation under God. Just to pray, that's all I ask for, is send me a praise report, Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo, and I will send you, my God, I will send you the download of One Nation under God. Powerful revelation God gave me concerning the American flag. Powerful, powerful. W-A-R-R-I-O-R-S, Liberty Ministry Warriors. My God, Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo. No, I know, I, I know, I know how they are, sis. Don't worry about it. I, I, I know, <laughs> my God, it, I, I, I try to read some of my typo errors and I'm like, whoa, what, what did this phone do to me? This iPhone, but it's important. I won't, I won't, I, you know, and I want to ask you, will you allow me to place those praise reports? Copy them and post them on Facebook. I have a, I have a ministry page. I have a ministry page and I have a, uh, and you can join it. You can go to in-depth under groups in Facebook. Go to in-depth Bible studies and questions. And that's by Dr. Michael Smith and People post questions there and we get into Bible studies and we get into things and randomly I'll post things on there that, that will just stir you up and make you think. Hallelujah. And, and, and you can be part of that. And, but you'll have a link to my Facebook. You'll have a link to everything. Uh, when I get that praiser, I'll send you links to everything. And you just click on the link and take and s submit add friend. And I will, uh, I will add that immediately the minute I see it. And I, and I'm telling you, I'm excited. Already we have sent out books on the, uh, one nation under God. And I believe with this coming up in an election year, my God, this book is vitally important. It, it reveals the destiny of America through the American flag. You don't want to miss this. This is a powerful concept God gave to me. Powerful. I describe everything. I go into detail with everything. So it's, it's important. All I ask from you is a praise report. That's it. That's it. And you get the ebook format of One Nation under God. That's it. Uh, if you want to join Liberty Ministry and all you got to do to join us and say, Dr. Smith, I will be a prayer partner with your, you and your ministry. I will pray for you. I will intercede for you and I will hold you and your wife's arms up in the ministry as you decree the gospel to a lost and dying. And that's all I want. That's all I want for you to say, Dr. Smith, I want to be a prayer partner with Liberty Ministry. That's it. Hallelujah. And, and no money included. I don't, I, I just want, I want people to pray for us, love us and pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. I've already had several people right here on the, on, on Periscope say, Dr. Smith, we want you to be our spiritual parents. My God, I, I don't know. I don't know what God's doing. I really don't know. I've been told that uh, I need to do that, but I don't know what God's doing. But you know what? I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to send you this book. Hallelujah. I want to send you this book, but I got to have your email. And then I get with Amazon and I, I do the gift and I send it out. They send it out to you within the next 48 hours. Sometimes it's within 24 hours. Just watch your email and your spam. It'll come from amazon.com and it will be uh, the instructions how to download the book, One Nation Under God absolutely free. I want to get it for you today. Sister Janet got hers today. Brother Reggie's not on with us, but he got his today. My God. And I want to get that in your hands. I want you to read that. One Nation Under God by Dr. Michael Smith. Hallelujah. And then there's other books out there. The book is soon to be released. Soon to be released called The Enemy in Me. That's going to be a powerful book. Powerful. It's going to make, it's going to make some religious people 
mad. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to make it mad. Amen. But that's all right. That's all right. I want to trouble the city. Come on. I want to trouble the city. The book Breaking Generational Curses is on, is on, is in Amazon right now. Powerful. I mean, I'm telling you, powerful. I deal with the DNA of the natural man, the DNA of the spirit man. I deal with all these things. It's a powerful book. The Breaking Generational Curses. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the book from the prison of purpose to the prison of praise. I wrote that in the Philippines during Typhoon Yolanda. How many remember Typhoon Yolanda? That was an experience being in the Philippines in that typhoon. That was an experience. 270 mile an hour winds and I was in a hut. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. But God is good. Amen. I said, God is good. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm here to talk about it. God is good. God, you see, the enemy can't do anything to you. When God's got a purpose on your life, the enemy can't bother you. He can't touch you. Amen. He can't bother you. So, uh, it didn't matter where I, I've been all over the, I landed in Seoul, Korea one time for revival and there was so much fog. We couldn't even see the runway when we landed. That's how much fog there was, but we landed the plane safely and got off. My God, tell me God ain't good. Come on. I, I'm telling you, I have, I have been in airplane situations time and time and time. I was on a plane in Chicago getting ready to go. We were taxiing on the runway going, getting ready to take off. And about the time we got ready to take off, a plane was coming down and we, we just got lifted up and I could look out my window and see the nose of the other aircraft. Tell me God ain't good. Tell me God is not good. Hallelujah. I've had blowouts on airplanes going 250 mile an hour going down a runway. My God, tell me God's not good. I'm still here. Tell me. I, you, you're the wrong person to try to tell me God isn't good. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I love you. Jesus loves you. But remember, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Right in it. Suddenly. When I begin to pray and sing praises, suddenly, it's the day to do that, friend. It's the day to do that. Remember, we love you, and something good is going to happen to you. God bless you.